before we begin. Um, note that the tributes fall at the very beginning of the program, and we will take them in the order as they appear. Uh, the service will proceed unannounced, so make sure that if you are down to do something, you have a program and you come at the appropriate time. We will close the casket in maybe the next two minutes. So if you need to take another look, you can do so within this period. All right, thank you. Put your cell phones on the silent mode so that the service will proceed uninterrupted. Thanks.
I invite the Mothers' Union to come forward. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Holy Trinity Mothers Union and even the Deanery and the Mothers Union in this country, the Diocese of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, we my sister, condolences sincere to the entire family. She'll be greatly missed for the joy and the laughter that she brought us. She was a mother, and here I see Lerna is coming to do the honors, but thank God for the privilege that she has blessed me and my family. And there was never time she didn't ask how was my family doing. And she made me feel so welcome to be a part of the Jamaica family and his family at Holy Trinity. We loved her and we continue to dance and sing and laugh even in our grief. God bless you. Here is Sister Lerno. A tribute for the life of the late Millicent Samuels, affectionately called Millie, Miss Millie. Through memories, the ones we love live in our hearts forever. Though we mourn the loss of a great sister, we are reassured by God's word in John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, which reads, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And so we know that her spirit lives on in a better place. Today, we are meeting in a jovial spirit to recognize the life of our dear sister Millie. We reminisce on a life of purpose, as example that all can glean from. Miss Miller was known to us as the stepmother, the entertainer, the dancer, the singer, and of course, Métis. Yes, mm -hmm. and we all shared well. She was an ardent member of the Holy Trinity Mothers Union for the past 20 years. And of course, at our busy sessions, when Millie commented on a matter, her facial expressions were clearly understood. A caring, jovial person. She was not the jovial that was commonly used. She was extra special. She was supportive of whatever the group was asked her to participate in and especially towards outreach programs. She was also a part of the Mother's Union Prayer Circle and usually conveyed messages in songs, songs that she sung at times according to how the Spirit moved her. Maybe it was her ways of thanking God as she was an endeared mother who upheld Christian principles and high standards in her astute walk in Christ. Among the things we recall about Millicent was her caring nature and her deep-rooted faith in God. She had a heart that overflowed with compassion and genuine concern for others throughout her life. She demonstrated formidable strength, class, and grace. She left a legacy that we too can emulate. Miss Millie, 
was an entrepreneur who had great love for the people, especially those at, those at the market whom she interacted with. She enjoyed taking strolls and engaged persons along the way. Her charismatic and infectious personality brought joy to all those who met her. At church and at our meetings, she would cater to us by discreetly giving us sweets in our hands as we passed by her into church. She was one selfless measure, always willing to lend a helping hand or volunteer for a good cause. We shared fun times, especially at our wedding anniversaries in the foyer, where she made everyone feel welcome. So, as the mother Zuna and bid her farewell, and the curtain closed on another limb of our branch, we will remember Millie as a beacon of strength, love, and resilience. We will reminisce on the wonderful memories we have shared and her level of dedication. I close with a quote from Numbers chapter six. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May her soul rest in peace as she transcends to God's mansion over the hilltop.
and God alone created all these things we call our own from the mighty to the small the glory in them all is God and God's alone God and God alone reveals the truth of all we call unknown and the best and worst of man won't change the master's plan it's God's and God's alone God and God alone is fit to take the universe to throne let everything that lives reserve its truest breath for God and God alone God and God alone will be the joy of our eternal home he will be our one desire our hearts will never tire with God and God alone God and God It's fit to take the universe to throne. Let everything that lives reserve its truest praise for a God and God alone. Let everything that lives reserve its truest praise for a God and God alone Good morning, everybody. 
I just sit here to say a few words from my friend. I've known Millicent Samuel Millie since 1967. Her late husband. Her late husband James and my husband were workmates and close friends, and that's how we became friends. Oh God. We were rich now. Friends. She she was a very good friend with a great personality. She was such an inspiration person who cared without resisting. Wait a second. Feminine woman. Help me finish. Sorry about that. A feminine woman. She was the legacy of our friendship will forever be engraved in my heart. There's so much more I can say, but time will not allow me. Soar with the angels, Millie. I'll forever love and miss you. Look at that if you need more added. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. sorry. God bless you all, brethren. Morning, everyone. For those who don't know me, uh, I'm Daniel, loving grandson to Millicent, son to Scarlett, daughter to Millicent. <clears throat> Thank you for you all being here today with us to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman, my mother. Thanks you. And we're so happy that you're all here today to celebrate the life of uh, who I affectionately knew as Nana. Can you hear me now? Excellent. Millicent. As many of you know, there are no lessons to the art of mothering, but we can only do our best and hope that things turn out well. My grandmother was a kind, generous, amazing woman who could be brutal at the best of times. But for her, it was always for our own good. As we all know, Millie wasn't a shy woman uh, and she loved being the center of attention. Something I can confirm has uh, gone down into our family to yours truly today. But she was also a mother, wife, sister, daughter, friend. And fun fact, also one of the first black women in the 70s to own home business in England. Something I'm extremely proud of to this very day. At the time, whilst times were hard, we never went without. She was a very, very proud woman, and she had a fun sense of humor and a passion for life that he enjoyed her to everyone that came into contact with her. She was actually brought up in a time when women were just lying on their feet, as it were, where their minds were opening up to new possibilities, and she was certainly ready for all of that. In terms of my mum, uh, she'll always remember the Christmases, which were total chaos in the kitchen as Nana prepared Christmas dinner. Um, but each time there were many, many new brothers and sisters in the house, full of life, full of joy, and full of love. My Nana's greatest quality, without a doubt, was to be strong and to always encourage us to make the best of everything and to confront our problems head on. Again, she was extremely proud and there was no obstacle that couldn't be overcome. As evidenced by this room today, my Nana had many friends, many loved ones. Even in retirement, she would have an endless stream of people, friends, loved ones dropping in, kids in the neighborhoods come over her and ask for her questions and she would talk for hours, guiding them as well as guiding me. My Nana always had our support and in turn gave us her support and strength 
And to be honest with you, as of right now, we're not quite sure how we're going to cope without her. She leaves a massive hole in our hearts, a massive hole in our lives, but we'll draw from the things that she has always taught us and live by the wisest words that she always shared. So I'll end with those wise words, which were simply, accept the things you cannot change and change the things that you are in control of. Thank you. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. With faith in Jesus Christ, receive the body of our sister, Medicine for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and under the Holy Spirit. But therefore, with confidence, pray to God, our Heavenly Father, to give us life as we raise us with perfection and come to the saints. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember you for you this day, our sister of innocence. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends to know and love as a companion 
on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console the family and friends who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, and so that in quiet confidence may continue our course on earth until by our call we are united with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I now bless the body with holy water to record her baptism into Christ. On the day when she baptized, she put on Christ. She received the promises that Christ has made. The final one is eternal life. I bless the body of medicine with holy water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Recalling the words of St. Paul in Romans, all of us are baptized in Christ Jesus, are baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we are buried together with him. So as Christ was raised from the dead by the God of the Father, we too might live a new life. On the day of our baptism, we send put on Christ. On the day of Christ coming, May she be clothed with him in glory. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for the hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. <laughs>
Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Millicent. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Seated for the first reading. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 61, reading from verse 1 to verse 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. The word of the Lord. The 23rd Psalm.
The second lesson comes to us from 1 Timothy chapter 6, reading from verses 12 through to 16. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this will be made manifest at the proper time by the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. The word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 11, beginning at verse 21. Glory to Christ our Savior. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, 
my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from the God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. There is a land of pure delight where saints immortal reign. Infinite day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. Oh, could we make our doubts remove those gloomy doubts that rise and see the Canaan that we love with unbeclouded eyes. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. It is with sadness that we are gathered here this morning mourning the passing of our dear sister Millicent, affectionately known as Miss Millie. Her passing came as a shock to many of us, as her illness was not seen as one considered to be life-threatening. Never did we believe that she would not be with us at this time. But when we think about it, who can truly tell when one will depart this life? And so here we are this morning saying farewell to our sister Millicent. I believe that for you, the family members, the loss is even more painful as you didn't expect her to depart this life now with you not being by her side 
to say goodbye. Millicent's death is a timely reminder to us all that in the midst of life, we are in death. In the midst of life, we are in death. It confirms also that no one knows the hour or minute, the time of day when one will depart this life. And so the scripture reminds us that we must always make ourselves ready for that moment of departure. None of us knows the hour, the minute, the time, or day. The reality is this, my brothers and sisters. We live, we move about, and eventually we will die. We live, we move about, we do all the things that we need to do to survive in life. Eventually, we all will die. I say to you, the family members, as you grieve, take heart. Do not lose faith. The God who gave life to Millicent and who sustained her over these many years has not abandoned her in death. She trusted in him and now he has called her home. And so I extend sympathy to you on behalf of the Holy Trinity Church family and pray you will find comfort in God during this painful period. Just to look a little bit on the life of Miss Millie. She lived a full life. And on many occasions, she would share with me the many struggles she had to undergo. She, the triumphs she experienced and the great debt owed to God for his immense blessings on her life and family. Many of us can share a little bit of the experience we had with Miss Millie and you wouldn't believe that this small framed lady had so many different sides to her. In a nutshell, I would say Miss Millie was a fighter, an ambitious lady, a generous woman. She enjoyed having fun. She was at times argumentative, stubborn too, but putting all these attributes together, she was one unique woman. Miss Millie had a great love for her church. She was a member of the choir, Mother's Union, and she was known for her involvement in selling ice cream to provide funds for needy students. Her signature event was the yearly rally where she would be seen or could be seen dancing and prancing across the front of the church. You just need to see her. She would set the rally on fire with her upbeat singing, sometimes a bit off-keyed, but would confidently sing to the glory of God. She certainly will be missed here at Holy Trinity. We will miss you, Miss Millie. And so as we reflect on the life of this faithful member, I want to use words from 1 Timothy chapter 6, which warn us to stay away from getting too entangled with worldly affairs and to aggressively pursue a life with God. To aggressively pursue a life with God. Paul writing to Timothy cautions him not to be led astray by false teachers and those who have a strong grip 
on the things of the world. He warns him about the pitfalls that could ruin his integrity. Money, power, quarrels, envy, strife, and the list goes on. Be mindful, he says, of all these things. Flee them and seek after righteousness. Interestingly, my brothers and sisters, Paul's admonition to Timothy is geared towards preparing him for his role as a leader in the faith. As a leader, he must stay clear of these qualities so as not to bring the faith into disrepute. But even greater, Paul wants, wants to ensure that Timothy's spirituality remains strong and intact. So set aside his training for leadership, he must, in a general sense, be connected to God. Must be connected to God. So the message coming out of Paul's discourse is very much applicable to all pursuing a life of righteousness and not specific to one with leadership ambition. It is for all of us who want, want to have a life in God's kingdom. If we examine the passage closely, we will understand that these things highlighted by Paul are the things that can lead to believers being unfaithful to their calling. When we engage in quarrels, when we love money too much, all these things can cause us to be unfaithful to God. Paul therefore stresses the point that Timothy pursues righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and endurance. Admirable qualities. As we go through life, these are the qualities we need to have to ensure a peaceful and harmonious existence with our brothers and sisters. Just imagine if we can get it right, if we can show love, if we can be considerate to each other, if we can be compassionate to our brothers and sisters. What a wonderful world this would be. Life void of these qualities lead to war, confusion, hostility, and eventually death. Jesus, like Paul, encourages us to have our focus in these areas, areas that bring harmony and peace, so that eventually our being will be immersed in such nature and we can only display fruits of righteousness as we coexist with each other. These fruits of righteousness are what we are expected to display on a daily basis as we live with our brothers and sisters. Paul then, in putting it all together, pressed Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. Take hold, he says, of eternal life. And in the end, it will bring him joy. It will bring him his crown. I say the very same thing to us this morning. For every single one of us, we need to take hold of eternal life. We need to fight the good fight of faith. My brothers and sisters, to go through life requires a constant fight for us to achieve in every area. When we think about just existing in our families, in our workplaces, in church, we need to fight in order to achieve. So it is true for the material and it remains the same for the spiritual. 
We fight hard to get ahead in life with seemingly temporary rewards. Let us therefore change the focus and fight the spiritual battles to secure our permanent home with God. We will not achieve spiritual maturity without a fight. If we believe we can just sit down and it will come, not so. We have to fight the good fight of faith. Do we fight alone? No. Jesus promises strength to overcome, but we must provide focus and the intention needed to win the coveted prize of eternal life. I believe Millicent, with all her flaws, fought valiantly the good fight, and we are hopeful today that she has been given that gift of eternal life. We are hopeful. We who remain are encouraged to be steadfast in relinquishing our hold on the world and to cling tightly to the spiritual discipline, the discipline that will lead us to win the crown of life. I am sure, my brothers and sisters, that every single one of us this morning, every single one, wants to make it to God's kingdom. Again, we have to fight the good fight of faith. We are reminded today that it is the day of salvation, and therefore we must seek the Lord whilst he may be found. We must use the opportunity that we have now to call upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The battle is not for the weak or the strong, but it's for those who can endure to the very end. So we must have endurance before us. We must fight to the very end. May we fight the spiritual race with all our might, forgetting the things of the world and the press earnestly towards the mark of the high calling. We are people of God. We are believers. We must have that determination to win the coveted prize. We believe our sister has done this, and it is now our time to follow suit. She, I believe, is now in God's kingdom, resting and experiencing peace in its fullest form. You too can experience this peace that Jesus offers each and every one today. May we fight, brothers and sisters. May we fight the good fight of faith. May her soul rest in peace and light eternal shine on her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
stand and we continue in prayer. For Sister Millicent, the Spirit of the Lord Christ who said, I am the res resurrection and the life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in the distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Millicent and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister Millicent to eternal life. You promise, that, you promise that as the thief who repented, bring our sister Melissa to the joys of heaven. Yes, our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Yes, she was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes, Comfort us. In our sorrows at the death of our sister, Millicent, let our faith be our consolation, to our life our hope. Yes, Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for Millicent and all those we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let life, life perpetual shine upon them. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. During the singing of the next hymn, an offering will be taken for the outreach work of the church.
pray. Uh, Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us. This bread, this wine, this money. We them we offer ourselves our lives as our work. We come to you in our Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body of blood of Christ, so may we, O Lord, your people, become channels of your love. Through the same Christ our Lord.
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. His continued intercession for our sin, heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. <laughs> Remember Millicent, in baptism she died with Christ. May she also share his resurrection when Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory, when every tear will be wiped away on that day. We shall see you, our God, as you are, and we shall become like you and praise you forever. Through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things do come. With him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise.
break this bread. We share the body of Christ. Lord, we are in the middle of one body, because we all share in one bread.
Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crime, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. May be seated. Blessed good morning, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> this is a tribute from the Holy Trinity Church. I ask your forgiveness. I'm having issues with my voice today. This is a tribute to Millicent Samuels. Millicent Samuels became a regular, active, and faithful member of Holy Trinity Church after returning to Jamaica to reside in Westgate Hills, St. James. Millicent Samuels completely integrated herself and her husband James of blessed memory in the life, work, and witness of Holy Trinity Church from they started attending the church. She became a member of the Mother's Union, as you heard, and was involved in all the activities until ill health took its toll. She was also a member of the Virgo group. Millicent was an innovative person and had ideas for how things should be or should be done, and she was never timid to express her thoughts and ideas. She became the leader of a group, I don't know who will remember, dedicated to praying earnestly for members and other persons who requested or needed prayerful support. The group was dubbed the Prayer Link and this group met remotely on the telephone, and Millicent loved the telephone, and at agreed set times would pray for persons, the church community, and for our country. The prayer link was formed long before any pandemic or social media interventions, and it provided prayerful support and helped many persons in their times of distress and need. Millicent loved to sing. You can have heard that and became a member of the choir. She was never afraid to request the privilege of singing solo to the congregation whenever the spirit moved her. She had a country and western vibe and enjoyed sharing her many and varied songs with the congregation. She had a vivid, lively, colorful, and forthright personality and was never afraid to express her strong opinions on any topic or to anyone willing to listen. She was not selfish as she basked in her husband's James popularity with the ladies of the church who were either his daughters or his wives. I'm happy to say I was a daughter. They were a lovely couple and it was a very difficult time for her when James made his transition, although she didn't show it. Her health deteriorated during the COVID-19 pandemic and she was unable to attend services regularly. She attended service in person on a number of occasions during the easing of the COVID-19 restrictions. And it was very sad to see that she required the assistance of a wheelchair, but her irrepressible personality was still very evident and she was as buoyant as usual whenever she attended service. Millicent was a woman of faith and she was not afraid to face her illness and waning health and in expressing it to me was prepared to meet her Lord and Savior face to face although I was telling her no one was ready for her the last time I spoke to her. She peacefully transitioned the way that many of us would like to go just to sleep away. She has gone to be with James in the loving arms of her Lord and Savior. On behalf of the rector and the Holy Trinity Church family, we extend to Miss Millicent's children, other relatives and friends, 
our sincere condolence at this time of bereavement. As you navigate your grief, I leave you with the words of Helen Laurie Marshall in the poem, Afterglow, that I believe Millicent would wish to say to you. I'd like the memory of me to be happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when life is done. I'd like to leave an echoing whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun, of happy memories that I leave when life is done. You will grieve her passing, but be comforted that she was given to you for the time allotted by her creator, and that during her sojourn with us, she lives such a full and meaningful life and has left her footprints in your hearts. Holy Trinity Church will miss Millicent Samuels, but we grieve as though who believe that death is not the end, but the beginning of a new and better life for the faithful. May her soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine on her.
sometimes I'm down Coming for to
let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn be thou my vision. Amen.